Real estate is full of all this crazy lingo. And when I was studying for my real estate exam, I felt like I was learning a new language, but I got you covered. Today, we're gonna go through the ABCs of real estate part three. And if you haven't seen part one, I'm gonna put a card right up there. Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to the Real Justine Priestley channel. I am the Real Justine Priestley, your realtor with a twist here in the greater Vancouver area. And I'm trying out a new set design. What do you think? Comment below. <laughs> Let's get right into it. A is for appraisal. An appraisal is an estimate of a property's value by an authorized person. An appraisal is important not just in the buying and selling of real estate, but also in the borrowing of money in the form of a mortgage. B is for breach of contract. A breach of contract is a failure without legal excuse to perform any promise that forms all or part of a contract. B is for bloopers. <laughs> Why? <laughs> An appraisal? Hmm. B is for beach up. Yay, I did it. C is for chattel. Chattel as opposed to a fixture. A chattel is any movable possession of personal property that is not fixed in any way to the property. For example, a wall-mounted TV, the TV is a chattel, but the mount is a fixture. D is for down payment. A down payment is a portion of the full price paid at the time of purchase with a balance to be paid later. E is for equity. Equity is the value of a piece of property, such as a house, after any debt that remain to be paid for it, such as a mortgage, have been subtracted. If your house is worth a million dollars and the mortgage you still have to pay is 250,000, then the equity in your house is 750,000. F is for fraudulent misrepresentation. Say that 10 times fast. Fraudulent misrepresentation, fraudulent misrepresentation, fraudulent misrepresentation. No, I can't say it to you. A fraudulent misrepresentation is any lie or false statement that is used to trick a person into an agreement. G is for gobbledygook. Gobbledygook is defined as wordy and generally unintelligible jargon, i.e. gibberish, double talk, or rigmarole. Those are all really good words. H is for housebroken. Housebroken is what I hope any pets or guests are when they come to my house. I is for inspection. A home inspector will assess the condition of a property looking at heating and cooling systems, plumbing, electrical, water and sewage, fire safety, as well as evidence of pests, water damage or fire damage, any of which could affect the value of the home. J is for jurisprudence. The philosophy of law the study, knowledge, or science of law. K is for knickknacks, as in a collection of colorful knickknacks collected dust on her shelf. L is for leasehold. A leasehold is when a buyer purchases the right to occupy land, structure, or unit for a defined period of time. The leaseholder is allowed to sell their interest in the property where the new owner will be accepting the terms and conditions remaining in the agreement, including the amount of time left. But that can be negotiated. Today, M is for two words. M is for mortgagor. And M is also for mortgagee. The mortgagor is the person who acquires the mortgage. The mortgagee is the lender that lends the money to a person or persons to buy real estate. N is for negotiations. The act of negotiating to agree upon something or some things by formal discussion. O is for order nisi. In real estate, in a foreclosure situation, an order nisi is what the lender will ask the court to grant. The order nisi sets the length of time that the mortgagor has to pay off or redeem the mortgage. P is for plural. 
Plural is a term found in the CPS and also explained in the CPS. CPS, you might remember, is the contract of purchase and sale. The explanation of plural goes like this, and I quote, Any reference to a party includes that party's heirs, executors, administrators, successors, and the signs, and that singular includes plural and masculine includes feminine. Unquote. Q is for quiet enjoyment. This covenant promises that the grantee or tenant of an estate in real property will be able to possess the premises in peace without disturbance from hostile claimants. That's some legalese for you. R is for reno. It's not Reno, it's Reno. Reno is short for renovate or restore to a former better state. As in, that Reno they did added so much value to their house. S is for smoosh, smoosh, smoosh the light. S is for statement of adjustments. Statement of adjustments. In BC, typically prepared by a lawyer or a notary, a document that calculates all the adjustments of a monetary nature that need to take place between a buyer and seller of real estate. T is for title. Title refers to the rights of ownership in regards to a piece of real property. The person said to have title to property owns certain rights of possession and usage in the property. U is for unprecedented, which is what the Vancouver housing market has been for the last year or so unprecedented. V is for vendor. Vendor is another word for seller, as in my vendor wanted to take full advantage of the unprecedented sale that his neighbors had, so he did a full reno on his house. W is for wainscoting. Wainscoting is a paneling, usually wood, on the walls of a room, usually on the lower portion. X is for Xerox. Does anyone out there remember Xerox? Xerox was the brand name of ancient photocopy machines from the 20th century, widely used by basically all businesses up until the 1990s. Xerox machines sometimes featured prominently at office parties. Y is for yippee, yippee. You might say this if you notice that your house has gone way up in value in the last couple of years. Z is for zen. Having or showing qualities such as calmness and an attitude of acceptance and patience. I think these are great things to practice in times of stress. Calm, patient, accepting. Thanks for watching everybody. If you made it all the way to Z, I am super impressed with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Real Justine Priestley channel, everyone. I am the Real Justine Priestley. Remember, reach out anytime. I'm here to help and I'm here for you. Today I wanted to end the video with a little dance party, but then I realized YouTube probably won't let me play the song but I'm gonna dance to it anyway. Maybe you guys can guess the song. If you'd like to find out the hard truth about what it's like to be a realtor, you can watch this video right here.